Referee Ross Campbell from the RFU had to step in before the game even started to make a decision over the kickoff time after GHA arrived late due to a traffic hold up en route. Jed wanted a 3.15 kickoff. GHA asked for 3.30. The referee went for 3.20. And it was Jed who had the first chance to score with a penalty from Ewan Scott, but he pushed it wide. A couple of minutes later, he tried again and scored before GHA hit back with a well worked try to take the lead. To be honest, the Jed Forest defence was not at its most organised, and on a day which was perfect for running rugby, winger Rory O'Keefe sprinted in at the corner to make it 5 3. Unfortunately, we didn't get a game of fluent running rugby. Indeed, it was a pretty poor spectacle with dozens of penalties, a lot of stoppages and plenty of handling errors despite the dry ball. On 20 minutes, Jed caused problems by rolling them all up to the GHA line and could well have scored, but for a GHA infringement and a penalty chance which Ewan Scott scored to retake the lead. The visitor's standoff, James Noonan, kicked a penalty of his own to snatch the initiative back at 8-6, before Scott put Jed in front again with another penalty. Quality play was certainly at a premium, but GHA did string a couple of moves together towards the end of the first period. Their pack was beginning to win the battle up front, and they had a golden opportunity to get points on the board here, but poor handling let them down. Their backs had a chance to score another try, but while they gave the ball plenty of air, this time the Jed defence coped with the attack. In a game of cat and mouse, Noonan struck before half-time to change the lead for a fifth time with a well-taken drop goal to put GHA in front 11-9. And so to the second half, and following another Noonan penalty, Jed started to look a little sharper, and James Hogg, deputising for the injured Ross Goodfellow, certainly gave GHA a few worrying moments, and he was at the heart of the move which created Jed's only try of the game from young ex-Thistle player Scott Rayburn, who went in at the corner in an almost identical place to where GHA scored their try in the first half. Ewan Scott missed the conversion, but the home tails were up and they came close to another try soon after, unfortunately denied by some foul play. And while it prevented Jed from getting five points, it gave Scott the chance to take the lead back again, which he took to make it 17-14. But anything Scott could do was matched by Noonan and he drew the sides level with his third successful penalty. And he was at it again when GHA made ground into the Jed 22, eyeing up a second drop goal. But his effort hit the bar. Jed gave him yet another chance to win the match with a penalty, but again he struck the woodwork. Into injury time and, would you believe, another penalty. Surely he'd make it third time lucky. Well, this time he was nowhere near the target and soon after the final whistle blew and both teams had to settle for a share of the points. Disappointing for players from both sides. Well, Darren got away with the draw, I suppose, in a way you could say you were a wee bit lucky. Very lucky. Um, to be honest, we didn't start, you know, and um, we never got started. I think we played about two or three minutes of, of rugby that I know we can't play in the sort of first ten minutes of the second half there. But um, I've got to be a little bit more streetwise, you know. I'm not going to make an excuse, but we've got a lot of a lot of young lads out there, and um, just some of the decision making there was terrible. And uh, you know, they're, they're all massively disappointed and stuff. Um, you know, we've got a lot of work on, and I'm just trying to, you know, to say we don't overreact when we get beat, we don't overreact when we uh, when we win, and we certainly won't overreact just, you know, getting a straight in the draw. Um, it's what we've just got to, got to get here on Tuesday night and put it right. And a game of many penalties once again. Yeah, it's, it's, it's um, you know, to be honest, it's, we didn't get the best of starts anyway because of the, the preparation, and, uh, you know, I, I don't know whether you know what, I'm not going to go into it, but I don't know whether you know what went on before uh, before the game, but I just can't understand how, it, um, you know, how an away team can can dictate the kick-off time and the referee can, um, you know, 
dictate the, the the kick off time if you like when they got here and plenty of time and uh, and we've got a, I've got a game I've got a team to uh, to prepare as well and we're trying to be as professional as possible um, and I get my team prepared for a certain time and then they just turn up when they like and you know referee asks me uh, asks us when when I want the kick off and I give them an extra 15 minutes and uh, their coach didn't like that and the referee made with kick off at 25 or so um, you know it just spoils it spoils all our preparation as well at home and you know like I say there's some young lads out there and they need you know we need to get time the preparation right and it didn't help at all I mean we're not making that an excuse don't get us wrong we didn't play but um, it didn't help our case